All right, this is Mr. Johnson, and uh, I'm going to walk you through how to do 5 through 15 on our genetics practice uh, worksheet. All right, so let's go ahead and start with number five. Uh, a tall plant is crossed with a short plant. What percentage of the offspring will be tall? All right, so the first thing we do is we bring over the first parent, which is homozygous dominant. And then we're going to bring over the short plant, which is uh, homozygous recessive. Then, of course, we just do the cross. Uh, it's nice to write the capital letters first. And there's our offspring. And so what percentage of the offspring will be tall? Well, each one of these uh, boxes has at least one capital T, and that's dominant. Uh, so, 100% of the offspring will be tall. All right, uh, so that was number five. Let's go ahead and do number six now. Number six uh, says a heterozygous plant is crossed with another heterozygous plant. What percentage of the offspring will be short? Well, let's go ahead and uh, bring down our parents. Okay, so here's one parent, heterozygous for plant height and heterozygous for plant height. We do the cross, writing our capital letters first. And so we go back and it says, what percentage of the offspring will be short? Well, since that's a recessive trait, we need there to be two alleles for, the, uh, for that plant height. So 25% uh, will be short. And then it says, what percentage will be tall? Well, if we look back, three of the four have at least one capital T. And so that means 75% will be tall. All right, let's go ahead and look at number seven. Number seven says a heterozygous round-seeded plant uh, with that genotype is crossed with a homozygous round-seeded plant. Uh, what percentage of the offspring will be homozygous uh, dominant? So two capital R's. Well, let's go ahead and bring over the first parent, big R, little r. And then we'll bring over that second parent. And we'll do the cross. And it says, what, per what percent of the offspring will be homozygous dominant? Well, if we look in here, we see that this box, as well as this box, are both homozygous dominant. So 50% have the genotype big R, big R. All right, why don't we go ahead and look at number eight. Uh, number eight. Eight asks, a homozygous round-seeded plant is crossed with a homozygous wrinkled plant. What are the genotypes of the parents? Well, we kind of go back to uh, the letters that they used up here, uh, the letter R. It says a homozygous round. And we know round is dominant, so we use a capital R and another capital R, because they said homozygous, is crossed with a homozygous wrinkled Wrinkled is recessive, so we're going to use little r, little r. And so the four alleles I just wrote up here, we could easily put right here for what are the genotypes of the parents. Uh, then they want us to do the cross, and it says, what percentage of the offspring will be homozygous? Well, let's do the cross. Well, looking at my uh, four boxes here, uh, none of them are homozygous. So I'd say 0% for the first question. And then the next one says, what is the genotype of all the offspring? Remember, the genotype is what genes they have. And so for this instance, all of them have a big R, little r. All right, let's go ahead and give number nine a shot. 
make this one red. And then number nine says, in pea plants, purple flowers are dominant to white flowers. If two white flowered pea plants are crossed, what percentage of their offspring will be white flowered? Okay, so white flowered is recessive. Uh, so that means we need to pick um, some letter. Well, I guess I'll just pick B um, to represent the flower color. And so the question said, uh, if two white flowered, so I know that their genotypes all have to be little b, little b. And of course the cross, we get the same in all four boxes. Uh, what percent of their offspring will be white flowered? Well, we look in there and they're all homozygous recessive, uh, which is white. So we're going to get 100% white flowers. Okay, number 10. A white flowered plant, all right, so we know that that has to be a uh, homozygous recessive, and I'm still going to stick with uh, B. A white flowered plant is crossed with a plant that is heterozygous for the traits. So remember the prefix there, hetero means different. So I'll put that parent over here and they're hetero. So one's going to be capital, one's going to, one allele is going to be lowercase. What percentage of the offspring will have purple flowers? Okay, well let's go ahead and do the cross. And remember, up here it says purple flowers are dominant. So all we need is one capital letter in a box to give us purple flowers. And I have one box right here and another box with a capital letter. So two of the four is going to be 50% um, are going to have purple flowers. All right, let's go ahead and go to number 11. Number 11 says, two plants, both heterozygous, so that means different, for the gene that controls flower color crossed. Well, let's go ahead and set up that Punnett square. There's one parent, and there's the other parent. We do the cross. Um, it says, what percentage of their offspring will have purple flowers? Well, uh, looks like this box, this box, and this box all have at least one capital letter. So three of the four boxes, or 75%, will be purple. What percentage will have white? Well, that's going to be this last box down here. And so one out of the four, or 25%, will have white flowers. All right, let's do the last couple ones here. And let's see, number 12. Uh, it says, in guinea pigs, the allele for short hair is dominant. Um, so what genotype would a heterozygous short-haired guinea pig have? Oh, well, they don't want us to actually do a cross here, so... Uh, I'll just write it to the side. The genotype, what genotype would a heterozygous short-haired guinea pig have? Well, that would be, I'll pick H for hair. Um, it's going to have a capital H and a lower case H. Uh, what genotype would a pure breeding short-haired guinea pig have? Well, once again, short hair is dominant and purebred is like homozygous. So the second part would be capital H, capital H. And then what genotype would a long-haired, well, long hair must be recessive to short hair. So that individual would be little h, little h. 
All right, so 13. Um, show a cross of some of these guinea pigs. So we'll go ahead and just turn this uh, Punnett square into number 13. It says, show the cross for, your, for a pure breeding short haired. Okay, so short hair is dominant, so that would be this genotype, big H, big H. Uh, short-haired guinea pig and a long-haired guinea pig. Well, long hair is little h, little h. And so if we do the cross, we can see that uh, they're all going to be the same. Uh, what is the geno, or sorry, what percentage of the offspring will have short hair? Well, all we need is one big h, so that would be 100% have short hair. And what is the genotype of the offspring? Remember, uh, the letters here are representing the genotype, so they're all going to be big H, little h. All right, number 14. Number 14 says, show the cross of a pure breeding short-haired guinea pig and a long-haired guinea pig. Oh, I'm sorry, that was number 13. Number 14. Uh, show the cross for two heterozygous guinea pigs. All right, so I'm going to stick with uh, H representing hair. Here are my heterozygotes, and I cross them to get the following uh, probable offspring. Uh, what percentage of the offspring will have short hair? Well, short is dominant. So this one, this one, and this one all have at least one capital H. So 75% will have short hair. And then what percentage of the offspring will have long hair? 25%. All right, then number 15 says, two short-haired guinea pigs are mated several times. Out of the 100 offspring, 25 of them have long hair. Uh, what are the probable genotypes of the parents? Well, you can do the work a couple different ways. Um, but the parents are going to end up being heterozygous. Uh, and that's because they say 25 have long hair. And referring back to my previous problem, um, I see that 25% have long hair right here. And so I know that the parents have to be heterozygous. But it says uh, show our work. So we'll set the Punnett square up like this. And after you do the cross, um, you'll notice that this is the only possible uh, way to get 25% long-haired. And so those are going to be our parents.